here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working
again. Is your faith alive this morning? Amen. Amen. You may have a seat. Welcome, welcome. I am Pastor Dina, one of the pastors here on Staff at Light and Life. Welcome in person and online. We are glad that you are here. And if your faith is not alive this morning, if you're going through a storm, if you're in the darkness and you do not know how to find your way out, this is the place to be because I know the presence of the Holy Spirit is here and he will guide us to that hope and that security that we have only through our Savior, Jesus Christ. But before we continue with that, let me share some announcements with you. Young adults and the young, uh, our youth group tonight will be meeting, but there's a change of time. 6.30 will be our starting time, and I will just personally ask that as you come in the night tonight, if you would quietly go to the youth room in case um, the funeral that we will be hosting this afternoon still may be going on or as the family may be leaving. If we can just be respectful of the building and just go straight to the youth room. If, the, if it's empty, then you come on in with your loud voices because that's what we like to hear as well, right? Um, Women's Bible study. Yes, you can still join. We, still, we gathered together last Wednesday night. This week will be the first lesson that we discuss, but it's not too late for you to grab a book and join us. Wednesday nights at 6.30. So let um, myself or even Brooke Haven know that you're interested. Choir practice. Uh, because of the services this afternoon has been canceled for tonight. But join us next Sunday at 4.30. If you have any questions, um, want, want more information, be sure that you check with Marsha. She would love to have you join as they practice for their once-a-month singing as well as the Christmas program. So be sure you get with that. 
always we have lots of announcements that we're not going to share all of them. So they are online. Download them. Look in your bulletin. But I do want to let you know that today as we end up the adult service without the movies, with our last movie um, theme today, Kids Ministries will also be doing kids flicks that we've started a couple weeks ago. We are continuing for two more weeks, but today we get to see the movie Annie. How many of you have seen the movie Annie? Yes, and you'll see the part that we're going to really focus in on is that I will be a friend who is loyal. We see Annie's friends from the, the orphanages was loyal, and then also Daddy Warbuck, how loyal he is. We're going to connect that with the story of Esther. Was she not loyal to her family, to her Jewish heritage there? We're going to connect that with the biblical truth, looking at the story of Esther. So kids, if you're not up and ready, get up and ready and come on in at 1045. We'll we'll be doing that this morning. Today is 9-11, and many of us will remember what happened how many years ago? A long time ago, on 9-11. But the hope that we have is not in people, because they disappoint, right? But we can live without fear. We can live with hope because of Jesus Christ. Are we ready to continue to worship that promise today? As we do remember the lives that was lost as they've defended the freedom here in this country. We do not want to... minimize that, we do think we are thankful for that. But our hope is in Jesus Christ and in him alone. So let us pray as we continue to worship this morning. Father God, there's so much happening today. But will you allow us to just to kind of put blinders on and to focus on you as we lift up our voices in song, as we lift up the voices, as we read and hear the scripture, as we watch a movie, Lord, and how Pastor Zach will connect the biblical truth and the life application that we can take from that. And then we give the rest of the day to you to guide us and direct us as we walk in obedience with you. As we give our tithes and offering just now, we ask that you bless it multiply it to meet the needs and the ministries that we have that you've called us to offer here at Lights and Life as we share the gospel, the life-saving, life-transforming gospel. It's in your precious holy name we pray. Amen. Nothing can separate even if I ran away, your love never fails. I know I still make mistakes, but you have new mercies for me every day. Your love never fails. You stay the same through the ages, and your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid, because I know that open seas, your love never fails, the castle is far too wide, I never thought I'd reach the other side, your love never fails, you stay the same.
Let's pray. God, you are our way maker, our miracle worker. You are the Lord, our God. You are faithful through all generations. And you are working the things of our lives together to bring us closer to you. We praise you this morning, Lord. We've poured out our voices, our hearts to you in praise, and we've given these moments to focus in on you and to be here in your presence with our family, the family of God, the family of the church. And Lord, we open our hearts to what you have to say to us today, whether it's through the music, through the prayer, through the reading of the word and the message, even the movie. We ask that you would speak to us. We are thankful for the miracles and the paths that we have seen you create and do before us, that there are so many praises we could share from even just a couple months ago, let alone years ago. We are thankful, Lord. You are faithful and good. And so as we come before you with a lot of prayer requests, a lot of things that are on our hearts or that we carry on our shoulders, we, we don't come before you beaten down or expecting the worst, but rather we come before you confident that you love us no matter what, confident that you hear us, that you are here with us, and confident that in each of the situations we bring before you, you can do amazingly more than we could ever understand. We pray for our dear friend Maxine and ask that you would be with her and hold her hand, wrap her in your arms, be the healer, the comforter, the peace that she needs right now. We pray, Lord, for the Morgan family as they honor Dottie today and celebrate her life and celebrate who you are. We pray for the Courtney family as this week they honor and celebrate Pastor Mike's dad, Bob. Our hearts go out to each of them. We ask that you would provide them with comfort and strength during what is likely to be a long and emotional day for each family. And we pray that you would give them joy and celebration even in the moments as they grieve. And in each of the situations that we bring before you, Lord, we ask that you would do what only you can do. We know that we can't fix it, we can't make it right, but, but you can do, you can work in the moments where we don't even know how to move forward. And so that's what we ask, boldly and confidently, trusting in the power and in the name of Jesus, our Savior. And we say, as the family of God, amen. You may be seated. Uh, hopefully, you grabbed your popcorn or refreshments on the way in. If you didn't, um, you obviously can get up and go grab it and come back, but you'll miss part of the, uh, the message today. But our movie this morning is American Underdog. It's the story of Kurt Warner and uh, his rise to being an NFL star. And if you haven't seen the movie, uh, you'll get a pretty good understanding of it in the clips today. But I would, I would encourage you to watch this one. This is a good movie, and it's a very God-focused movie even. So I, I think you would enjoy the movie, even if you're not a sports fan. Uh, my son Owen, who's 11, when he and I were watching it, he was annoyed with me. He kept saying, Dad, I thought this was a football movie. So <laughs> it's, it's not only for sports fans. It's, it's just a good movie. But uh, this is our last Sunday uh, to do at the movies. So let's, let's enjoy our film for this morning.
may seem like a failure, a mistake, but of all the characteristics of In today's going to witness one of the most amazing underdog stories in all of professional sports. As we watch today, let's focus on two key verses. The first is one we looked at in our first movie of this series as well. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And our second key verse is Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. As we hear Kurt Warner's true story, we'll see God working in his life continually through all the ups and downs. In our first scene, we meet Kurt when he is at college flirting with a girl at a dance. When Kurt starts talking to Kurt, she says, you define yourself as a sport. His whole life and purpose is focused on throwing a ball. As he begins unpacking this, we learn how football was tied to his relationship with his father. Kurt saw the sport as a way of making something of his life, to be important and worthy of love and respect. He even states, having a ball in my hand makes me feel like everything is all right. We all have something that defines us. It could be our job, I'm a teacher, I'm a doctor, I'm a police officer, or maybe your family defines you. I'm a mother or a father. Possibly something about your personality defines you. I'm the funny one, I'm the smart one, I'm the pretty one. These definitions often come from where we feel safe and confident. Someone might define him or herself based on their job because they do well and receive praise for their work. As the story continues, we see Kurt's definition of himself begin to shift. So let's watch as Brenda starts to open his eyes to this. Brenda tells the heart-wrenching story of her divorce and Zach's accident. She explains to Kurt how she defines herself by her relationship with God. She says, I'm just a work in progress. While Kurt defines himself by something he can do, Brenda defines herself by something someone else did for her. God sacrificed the life of his only son for her. She knows the only hope in getting through life is by having a relationship with him. Think back to how you defined yourself. Did you think about being a son or daughter of God? I love how the message words this in Romans 8, 15 through 17. This resurrection life you receive from God is not a timid, grave-tending life. It's adventurously expectant, greeting God with a childlike, what's next, Papa? God's spirit touches our spirits and confirms who we really are. We know who he is and we know who we are, father and children. And we know we are going to get what's coming to us, an unbelievable inheritance. We go through exactly what Christ goes through. If we go through the hard times with him, then we're certainly going to go through the good times with him. I love how God's spirit touches our spirit and shows us who we really are. That's such an incredible statement. We are the sons and daughters of God. Later in his letter to the Romans, Paul writes about how we have been adopted into the family of God. Everything he has is ours. If you are a follower of Christ, that is how you should define yourself. Not by what you can do, but by what Christ is doing through you. So as we enter back into our story, we see Kurt and Brenda talking after he has not been drafted to the NFL. He believes his dream is over. I understand why he would give him a dream and not allow it to be fulfilled. He tells Brenda that all he wants is a chance to prove he is good enough. She lovingly reminds Kurt that football isn't going to do that for him. It doesn't have to be the thing that defines him. Do you have a dream that you feel God has given you? Do you get frustrated when it feels like every obstacle is in the way? Remember that God is always working, even when we can't see it. James writes in the New Testament that these roadblocks can develop a perseverance in us that strengthens our faith. So let's watch as Kurt's dream seems to be coming true. His dream was coming true. He was ecstatic being called up by an NFL team, even if it was the <clears throat> Packers. But when it was his chance, he blew it. The coach explained, you cut yourself. 
You're not ready yet. That must have been so devastating for Kurt. Have you ever come so close to getting what you thought you always wanted, but then messed it up? It feels like one choice has broken the rest of your life. But our God is a God of second chances. Every believer's purpose is to love God, love others, and make him known to the world. There are a million different ways to do this. Just because you've messed up in the past, that doesn't exclude you from the blessings of God. As we grow closer to him, we are redeemed. Our path may look different than we first thought it would, but he brings about good. That is, think, he brings us closer to him through all the twists and turns we didn't intend to create. As the movie continues, Kurt comes to a very low point, but he chooses to make the most of what he has. He goes on to play arena football and support his family. He begins to stop focusing on his dream of football and starts seeing what God may really want from his life. Poses, he tells Brenda how much her relationship with God has changed his life. When he defined himself by sports, he never felt like he was enough. He always needed to be better and do more. But now he realizes none of that really matters. He tells Brenda, I want what you have. When he opens himself up to a different dream, Kurt is blessed with a beautiful family. If you have given your life to God, you know the peace that comes with that decision. In Luke chapter 9, Jesus says, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. There is such a peace that comes from knowing I am not in control. I've given my life to Christ and he guides my path. His dreams are my dreams and his ways are my ways. Once Kurt gives himself to God and his ways, things start happening with his football career. When he is no longer defined by the sport, he's able to have a better perspective and be ready for what is to come. All right, so obviously lots of buzz coming out this morning. Though, for the True appreciation Kurt now has for playing on an NFL team. Football no longer defines him, so he can play for the love of the game, knowing he's still loved if he fails. When the team's quarterback is hurt, Kurt is called up to take his place, and the offensive coordinator knows he's ready when Kurt tells him, this is my time. Brenda confirms this after she reads a heartwarming note from Zach. Has God given you a dream that you've given up on? Or maybe you're in that time of pressing on, waiting for your chance. Just as the song Waymaker says, God is moving even when we can't see it. Remember our opening verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. We serve a good God with amazing plans for us. We need to hold true to our faith in him and his plans. He is always working to bring us closer to himself and to give us the chance to show him to others. Kurt Warner, thank you for creating us and creating us on purpose for a purpose. So would you bow your head as we go to the Lord in prayer? And as we have seen with, with each of the movies, and it's not about the movie, but it's about finding connection to your story, even through film. It's not about our lives, but it's finding your story, weaving in and out of ours, leading us, and drawing us closer to you. Perhaps this morning we've been reminded all of the other things about us only work, they only fit if we've given it to you. If we have recognized that our calling is to be yours, 
then everything else starts to fall into place and make sense. And it doesn't mean that life is perfect. We still have struggles and make mistakes, but it does mean that we follow you, and that is always right. So, Lord, perhaps for some of us, today is a day that we need to make a change. We've been trying to follow after this dream or or this thing that we want or this definition of who we are. And we need to pause in this moment and say, no, the thing that matters most is my relationship with Christ. And if I don't really have that relationship, then the thing that matters most is that I begin that walk with Jesus. I take that first step of faith and say, Lord, I want to believe. I want to know you, and I'm going to begin to pray. I'm going to begin to read the Bible. I'm going to begin to connect with the people at the church who can help lead me to know Jesus better, just like Kurt saw in Brenda, someone who could show him who you were. We pray that you would give us those people in our lives, and maybe for some of us, we believe, but it's time to really commit. So, Lord, we pray that if that's our story, that today we would make that decision. Say, Lord, I want my story to be more about your story. God, we thank you for loving us and for pulling us in your direction. And it's with that in mind that we praise you this morning for who you are. We thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, just as Kurt said. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you sing this last song with us? All I once held dear, built my life upon all this world
I hope that's your praise, your story, what you would say today. So that I love you, Lord. You're my all. And that's what leads us. That's how we define ourselves. Because that's the definition that matters. All the other things work with him. And they don't quite make sense without him. That's what we all need. And that's what the world needs from us, too. That's our calling, to share that love, to share that definition with those around us. That's the challenge. That's our opportunity to step into who God has made us to be. I love you, church. I believe in who we are together. That God has given us this great calling and given us one another to accomplish his will in our world. Amen. Have a blessed week.